Welcome to Electro Online, and now we're going to learn something about photons and how they cause sunburns. Now, the photons that cause sunburns are the photons come from the sun that are UV radiation, ultraviolet radiation. And here we're going to learn why that is so, why UV radiation causes sunburns, and what it is about photons. Remember, photons are little packages of energy. So when sunlight arrives on the Earth, and comes to the atmosphere, a little bit of the UV radiation coming from the sun actually makes it through and will hit our skin as it's exposed to the sunlight. Now, it turns out our skin is of course made out of carbon bonds and carbon bonds can either be single bonds or double bonds and the amount of energy to rip those bonds apart, the energy required to separate the carbons will be 348 kilojoules per mole for single bond carbon bonds and 640 kilojoules per mole for double bonds. So, let's find out what the energy is required to break a single bond. And the way, of course, photons would cause those bonds to break is when a photon comes along and hits our skin, the photon, as it reaches our skin, will cause electric field and magnetic field oscillations that cause forces to exist on the electrons that it, that it comes in contact with or that it passes by, basically. And that causes those electrons to oscillate up and down, causing them to feel a certain amount of force. And if the force is sufficient, in other words, if the energy contained within the photon is sufficient to cause the the, the motion of the electron to be so violent that it can actually break the bonds in the carbon chains. And that is what would then cause what we know as a sunburn. So let's find out what the energy is to break a single bond if it's this many kilojoules for a mole of bonds. Of course, a mole it would be an Avogadro's number of bonds. And so we then take the uh, energy here that would be 348 kilojoules per uh, kilojoules per mole and then we multiply that times one mole divided by Avogadro's number of bonds okay so how much would that be so we take 348,000 because kilo means thousand divide by Avogadro's number which is 6.02 e to the 23rd and that gives us 5.78 times 10 to the minus 19 joules. Now if we convert that to electron volts, so one electron volt is equal to 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 joules, so we take that number and we divide by 1.6 e to the 19 minus, we get 3.61 electron volts. So if the photon contains this much energy, it can actually break a single bond between two carbon atoms. Hmm, how much is that compared to visible light or UV radiation? Well, we know that the energy contained within a photon is equal to the Planck's constant times the frequency of the photon, which is equal to h times the speed of light divided by the wavelength. Because remember that the speed of light is equal to the frequency times the wavelength, so the wavelength is c over f. All right, so... If we then plug in the numbers here, this is equal to Planck's constant, 6.626 times 10 to the minus uh, 34, that would be joules times seconds for Planck's constant, speed of light, 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second, and then we divide that by the wavelength. Now, remember, visible light has a wavelength, so visible light, VL, has a wavelength anywhere from 400 nanometers to 700 nanometers. And the most energetic light would be the purple light at 400 nanometers. So let's plug in 400 nanometers here. 400 times 10 to the minus 9 meters would be the wavelength of the most energetic visible light. So I have 6.626 e to the 34 minus times 3 e to the 8 divided by 400 e to the 9 minus. And so that gives us an energy of 4.97 times 10 to the minus 19 joules. And converting that to electron volts, one electron volt divided by 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 joules, 6 e to the 19 minus, and that gives us 3.10 electron volt. So the most energetic visible light, the purple light that we get from the sun, contains 3.1 electron volts per photon, and the bonds require the, the strength or the energy required to break a carbon bond is 3.61 electron volts. And again, since Einstein proved that 
photons are the basic quantities of light. Light is not a continuous stream of energy, but it's divided into small little chunks of energy called photons. You can only impart as much energy as contained within each photon. So visible light does not have enough energy to break the bonds in our skin. So our skin will stay intact as sunlight hits our skin. But what about UV radiation? It has shorter wavelengths and more energy. What kind of wavelength UV radiation can actually have enough energy to break one of these bonds? Well, let's find out. So now what we need to do is convert this to wavelengths. So a wavelength is equal to HC divided by the energy. So that's equal to 6.626 times 10 to the minus 34 joules times seconds multiplied times the speed of light, 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second, divided by the energy contained required to break a bond, which is 3.61 electron volts, which is this many joules, so that would be 5.78 times 10 to the minus 19 joules, and let's figure out what that is equal to, 6.626 e to the 34 minus times 3 e to the 8, divided by 5.78 e to the 19 minus equals, and we get 344 nanometers, which means if UV radiation makes it through to the surface of the Earth, and a small amount of it does, and it contains wavelengths of 344 nanometers or shorter, that UV radiation will carry enough energy to break the carbon bonds in our skin, and that is what causes sunburns. Now, double bonds require more energy. Notice that 640 kilojoules, you'll need quite a bit more energy to break those bonds, and the UV radiation that makes it through the atmosphere and through the ozone layer will not contain photons with the energy required to break double bonds, but it will have energy required to break single bonds, and that is what causes sunburns. And so you can see, we're safe with visible light, no problem there, but the UV radiation making it through can actually break the bonds in our skin, and that causes sunburns. And again, the reason why it works that way is because light is consistent of photons, and each photon carries that exact amount of energy which can be imparted on objects by the interaction of the electric field and magnetic field oscillations causing forces to exist on charged particles, causing them to oscillate back and forth, and if the oscillation is violent enough, then those will then break the carbon bonds inside the skin of our bodies. Amazing thing, good thing that only a very small amount of that UV radiation actually makes it through. Otherwise, we'd be in a lot of big trouble. All right, that's how that works.